Film Guy recaps here, don't forget to like and subscribe. The film opens in London as we see a dismal future. We are introduced to Alex Delarge who is sitting in the Korova Milk Bar, which serves customers drug-laced milk. Alex is with his crew of troublemakers, whom he refers to as the Drugs. This group includes Georgie, Pete, and Dim. After finishing their beverages, the group departs from Korova Pub for a night of ultraviolence. We observe them traveling to various places and running into difficulties. The gang is shown engaging in a fierce brawl with a rival gang in an abandoned theater after beating up a homeless guy beneath a bridge. The enjoyable evening is still ongoing and they are still in search of further action. They travel into the countryside behind the wheel of Alex's stolen sports vehicle. After that, they cause several car accidents by driving on the wrong side of the road. They finally come to a stop at a remote country home. Alex deceives his way into the home by claiming to be a car accident survivor. The drugs severely beat up the homeowner, a well-known author by the name of Frank Alexander. After doing unspeakable things to his wife, the crew heads back to the Korova pub once they've had their fill of troublemaking for the evening. At a nearby table, an opera singer is singing the chorus from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Although another drug makes fun of the singing, Alex is still in awe of her skill. He immediately receives a blow from Alex for insulting the vocalist. We discover that Alex adores Beethoven's music through this. Just before dawn, Alex arrives at his flat. He climbs into bed and as Beethoven's Ninth Symphony plays, he imagines violent events. Alex's mother attempts to get him up in the morning for school, but he makes up an illness. Later, as Alex wakes up and starts to saunter around the apartment in just his underpants, he runs across Mr. Deltoid, his probation officer. Alex receives a lecture from the police for missing class and is threatened with arrest. Later on that day, he runs into his drugs in the lobby of his apartment building. Alex feels tension building between all of them. They believe Alex has been intimidating them and has been hoarding all the profit of their robberies. Georgie suggests a way to increase income. He plans to rob a wealthy woman who runs a rural health farm. Alex dislikes how the group behaves when he is not the leader. Later, while the three drugs stroll by a riverbank, Alex devises a strategy to take back control. Because Georgie and Dim are unable to swim, he throws them into the river. Alex slices Dim's hand with a dagger as soon as he asks for assistance getting out of the water. The drugs attempt their identical ruse when they finally reach the healing farm that latter evening. They ring the doorbell and announce that an automobile accident has occurred. The wealthy woman, however, is suspicious and contacts the police. When the lads are not allowed into the home, Alex scales a drainpipe and enters a window on the second level. After an altercation between Alex and the wealthy woman, Alex strikes the woman in the face with a very SUS sculpture. Alex rushes out the front door as she hears police sirens in the distance. His drugs exact their retaliation there. The drugs depart when Dim hits Alex in the face with a milk bottle. The cops show up when Alex rides and cries on the ground as he is detained. Alex is interrogated by multiple constables at the police station but is resistant throughout. Deltoid appears soon. Deltoid informs Alex that, regrettably for him, the wealthy woman has passed away. Now, this makes Alex a killer. Even though Alex continues to take nothing seriously, he will soon be in jail. Alex is given a 14-year jail term. Alex receives prison attire after handing over his belongings to Chief Officer Barnes and responding to a series of inquiries on his health and general well-being. He is currently inmate 655321. A new therapy termed the Ludovico Technique is brought up by Alex to the jail priest two years later. Prisoners who participate in this experimental therapy are granted release from custody. Despite the priest's advice to the contrary, Alex remains determined. He wants to participate in this bizarre medical study. Alex puts on a performance when the interior minister of the government stops by the jail. Alex is chosen by the government as the ideal Ludovico subject. Then, Chief Officer Barnes frees Alex from jail and leads him to the Ludovico Medical Center Dr. Brenham interviews Alex in his own room after being provided the space. She injects him and reassures him that everything will be well. Alex shows up in an auditorium on his first day of therapy while wearing a straight jacket. He is unable to look aside since his head is restrained by a restraint chair. His eyelids are forced open with clamps. Then, as violent videos are being screened, the doctor keeps drizzling eye wash into Alex's closed eyes. He quickly develops severe nausea and begs for the therapy to cease. 
but while other medical professionals are also watching the procedure, Dr. Brodsky is speaking from the back of the audience. He reveals to onlookers that Alex experiences intense anxiety and powerlessness as a result of the injection. Alex will experience nausea before committing violent acts in real life if he experiences nausea when watching violent videos. This will train his brain to quit engaging in illicit activity. Dr. Brenham reaffirms to Alex that this is beneficial for him after the session. The next day, Alex returns to the theater and will receive two treatments. Alex screams once again as he watches World War II footage. The Beethoven Ninth Symphony is playing in the background. Alex yells that he shouldn't have to experience nausea while enjoying such lovely music. The medical professionals dismiss it and take no action. The interior minister cordially invites Alex to take the stage in front of a distinguished audience two weeks later, probably after 12 more treatments. When an irate guy initially approaches Alex, he beats him up and knocks him to the ground, but Alex doesn't resist. As a nude lady is then introduced on stage, Alex starts to feel nauseated at the idea of touching her improperly. The experiment has altered Alex's human character, but the interior minister is satisfied with the outcomes and is unconcerned. When Alex gets home, his parents are living with a stranger who has moved into Alex's bedroom and is now paying rent. Alex becomes enraged and wants to fight, but he becomes ill once more as a result of his treatment. He rushes out and sits by the Thames after realizing he has nowhere to reside. The homeless beggar who approaches Alex turns out to be the same person Alex tormented with his drugs two years prior. The homeless man drags Alex beneath the bridge, where many more homeless men start beating him up, after recognizing Alex. Arriving constables separate the conflict but to Alex's dismay, Dim and Georgie, two of his old drugs, are now the constables. Alex is handcuffed after they take him to the countryside and beat him up once again. Alex is no longer able to protect himself. After they go, Alex travels to the same farmhouse where he and his drugs tormented the well-known author Frank Alexander. Frank Alexander is confined to a wheelchair and is seated at his typewriter inside. Julian, his extremely hot and strong aide, unlocks the door and takes Alex inside. Because Alex was wearing a mask when he beat Mr. Alexander up two years ago, Mr. Alexander is unable to identify him. Alex is the only person Mr. Alexander knows that is being treated by Ludovico. Mr. Alexander invites Alex to stay with him out of curiosity. Mr. Alexander makes a friend-to-friend -friend call while Alex is taking a bath and reveals the government's immoral testing on Alex. He wants to exploit Alex to further his own political objectives. He quickly realizes that Alex is the one who broke into his house two years ago when he hears his singing voice and starts to trip balls. Later, Mr. Alexander is furious as he urges Alex to eat and drink at the dinner table. Mr. Alexander and the gorgeous Julian make Alex feel uncomfortable, so he eats a dish of spaghetti and consumes a lot of wine. Alex feels nervous while he eats and wonders if the hostile-looking elderly guy knows who he really is. Suddenly, Mr. Alexander informs Alex that two friends will assist him and are on their way. A woman and a man named Dolan enter a minute later. They inquire about Alex's experience with the Ludovico therapy and whether it is accurate to say that in addition to hardening him against violence, it also rendered him unable to enjoy music. After making this realization, he collapses into the plate of spaghetti. He appears to be under the influence of the wine. Mr. Alexander is congratulated by Dolan and then asks the handsome Julian to move the automobile to the front. Plans that the conspirators have for Alex will make the government seem bad. The following morning, Alex awakens in a modest bedroom on the second floor of an unidentified country home. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony can be heard blasting from a stereo in the room below. Alex is pushed insane as Mr. Alexander glows with joy. To escape the music, he takes a goofy a fall out of the window. Later, having survived the jump, Alex is discovered in a hospital in a full-body cast. Newspaper clippings show that the government is demonized for conducting cruel experiments. The subject of this investigation is the interior minister. Upon seeing Alex, Alex's parents apologize for not taking him home. When he gets discharged from the hospital, they guarantee him his former room. The psychiatrist Dr. Taylor then pays Alex a visit. He claims to have experienced bizarre nightmares with other scientists fiddling with his mind. She starts by displaying some graphic drawings to Alex and requests his feedback. Alex doesn't exhibit any symptoms of illness and seems thrilled with the violence. This indicates that the Ludovico therapy has been effectively stopped. 
the interior minister comes to see Alex and feeds him with a spoon. He guarantees Alex a nice position and a hefty income in exchange for keeping his mouth shut regarding the government. Alex enthusiastically accepts this arrangement. The minister asks his assistants to come forward as a sign of their understanding. Along with a large audio system blasting Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, they enter accompanied by a horde of reporters and photographers. Alex poses with the interior minister while seeming healthy and unaffected by the music. He is back to his violent self and here, this disturbing movie ends. To watch more awesome and thought-provoking movie recaps, please subscribe to Film Guy Recaps. Don't forget to like this video and tell us in the comments which movie you want to see next. Goodbye for now.